SNL had a huge oh, turnover. Saturday Night Live threw out a huge amount of their cast. It was one of their biggest. Uh, that's when I yeah, was that when I went in. Was it ninety like five, ninety four? Oh, or no, no, this right. is ninety three. Right, it was, or summer of ninety three. Right, and everybody I knew got hired. Every single person. David write- Tell got was a writer. Yeah. Jay Moore was a writer performer. Sarah Silverman writer performer. Lark Keitlinger. Yeah. Janine Garofalo. Yeah. I mean, the, my entire generation of comics got hired in SNL. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. And I was at the same audition. I auditioned the same night. Um, and I remember I was on first. They put me on fucking first. And John Stewart was hosting. Right. And Louis Ferranda, who ran the club then, um, the, the SNL people hadn't shown up. So right. So I said, I just want to start. Let's get going. And he told me to go on without them being there. Yeah. And I said, but they're not going to see me. And he said, we got to get going. I don't care. And I, I mean, I was crushed that I was just not going to get seen. The gatekeepers, again. Yeah. So John Stewart was my friend, and he said, I'll do as long as I can. Yeah. And he did like 20 minutes to open, but then he kind of shrugged at me and said, i got to bring you up. And I went on, and the instant I went on, the SNL people came in. And not only were, did they come in at a bad time, they also fucked up my set because they were a yeah, huge the seating, yeah. big, It was like seating 12 them. people. Yeah. But saving grace was that david spade was in the group and yeah. he knew me i didn't know him personally but he liked my act so he's he told him sit down and watch this guy and i saw him do it and i had a great set and then everybody else followed and the next day everybody found out who was hired everybody was hired and i wasn't and then i thought i this is it i mean i don't know if i can keep doing this and that's when you called me i called you in the middle of the night to ask you about san francisco yeah and whether i should move there and I was questioning the whole career. Yeah. And did I say anything helpful? We talked for till dawn. Yeah. And I just, I just, I think I unloaded on you that I didn't think I had any shot at anything anymore and that I was really remorseful. But it's like coming out of prison. How do you, how do you back out of a comedy career? Yeah. I was 25 years old. And I had been doing stand-up since I was 18. Yeah. So I had no way. Then no skills. No. Nothing. Nothing to offer. Any but, other. Except you could you could resurrect a dead computer. Yeah, I could fix a computer or a car. Or a car. <laughs> or I could uh, cover a, a football game for a cable station, yeah. you know. <laughs> and so we talked about it. You told me about your life there. And I just thought, I'm not going to make it there either. <laughs> and I hung up the phone intensely depressed. Yeah. And then my phone rang like two hours later. Like I got two hours sleep and it was... Um, this guy, hi, my name is Robert Smigel. I don't know if you've heard about the Letterman show going away, and Conan is this guy. And I didn't know any idea who Conan was. And he said, Jim Downey saw you at Catch. Jim Downey was running SNL then. And he said uh, that you were funny, so I wanted to know if you had any writing samples. Uh, Did you? I had it. Well, I had short films I had made. You had, oh, the ones that with I just Shapiro made on my own dime. And, and ice cream. Yeah, all that kind of That's stuff. That's available still on DVD, right? No, no, but you can see it on YouTube. I just put it all on YouTube. Oh, that you don't no sell that DVD no, of the short I, films? No, because I had to just make that in my house, that yeah. DVD. I uh, have one of those. Maybe I could yeah, I should hold on to sell it. sell it, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, or maybe I think my ex-wife actually took that. She's a big fan. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Well, she could sell it then. <laughs> Which ex-wife? Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> Okay. Um, but anyway, yeah, he hired, he, he hired me. Within a week, I was hired at Conan. They saved my fucking life. And I think it's important for people who are listening to realize that, you know, between you, Robert Smigel, Dino, Staff, and what I can never Sam remember. Sam and Sam uh, and Conan. Yeah. You guys redefined, you know, what, what late night sketch comedy looked like in the, in the context of, of that type of show. Yeah, it was a pretty different show, yeah. Well, you were pushing the envelope because your comedy being as absurd as it was and, and his sensibility and Dino's sensibility, you know, brought this type of, uh, you know, almost childish, childlike inventiveness to, to, to sketch comedy again, which, which was completely unique. I think that's true, yeah. And, and that it set the tone for that show for the next 12 years. Yep. And, and you were, you may remain friends with Smigel and Dino, I guess. Yeah, to, yeah. To, to some degree. 